Low carb and keto can be slightly different for women. Not a whole lot different, but different enough that it warrants its own video with its own meal plan. So what I've done in this video is I've broken down the scientific data, and from that I've compiled what I would say is a very ideal female keto plan. So I've taken the scientific data plus things that my wife does with her diet, and I've put them all together and said, okay, this will be a great video to explain what the female ketogenic diet should look like. Now, this is not everything, right? There's a lot of information, and I put so much content out, so much in my videos, that you could see eventually things are gonna cross and conflict. But I figure this is a great place for people to start if you don't know where to start, or if you just want some good entertainment to share with your friends and family that are learning about keto. So, the Women Keto Plan. So here's what you're gonna do. First, I want you to start your day with apple cider vinegar and lemon water. Okay, you can put a little bit of stevia if, in, you know, if you need to. What this is going to do is this upregulates something known as AMPK, okay? AMP protein kinase. Okay, what this does is this signals the body to start pulling energy from its stored tissues. And then it downregulates this in the brain. So what that means is that it tells the brain that you're full, but it tells the body that you're hungry. So the body starts to pull tissue, like fat, for energy. So it's a great way to start the day, whether you're keto or not, to be completely honest. Now, if you're a female, I highly recommend that you work out in a fasted state in the morning. Men should do this too, but let me explain why it's even more important for women. Women have what is called a higher intramyocellular triglyceride content. Women have fat in their muscle fibers, more so than men do, which means that these fats are readily available to be used as fuel a little bit easier than it is in the case of men. So you can actually get more out of a workout in a fasted state than a male could. Granted, I think both sexes should absolutely be doing it, but for women it's extra important. So let's go ahead and let's let's go ahead and dive right into this here. But for I want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that bell icon. That way you can turn on notifications know whenever I go live. I never want you to miss a beat. I really want you to be a part of this channel. Okay, so meal number 1. We're keeping the fats the highest in the morning. This seems weird because it seems like it'd be hard to digest, but there's a study that was published in BMC Genomics that actually found, believe it or not, that we have less likelihood of storing fat in the morning than in the evening, which means we can get away with consuming more fat in the morning, therefore we generate more ketones and have more energy. And it's all because the fuel accumulation genes, basically what allows us to accumulate fuel as fat, are working in our favor in this case. So here's what I recommend. One whole cage-free pasture-raised egg plus two yolks. And I talk about this for men too. Very, very important. Women, you're gonna get the biotin from the yolk. Good for your hair, good for your skin, good for your nails, good for everything you want with keto. Okay, but you're also getting the anti-inflammatory effect because you're not gonna have a whole lot of the egg white, which is inflammatory. And I talk about in all my videos, so I apologize if you've seen my videos before and I sound like a broken record. But the whole egg is inflammatory. The yolks are actually less inflammatory. I want you to cook it with ghee. Yeah, so ghee, you don't wanna cook at a really high heat. So ghee is clarified butter. You take butter and it's like clarified down to it's just the butter fat without the dairy component. That way we're getting the butyric acids, the butyrate effect. That's a short chain fatty acid that feeds the lining of our gut. Very, very good for women. And then I recommend putting an ounce or two of smoked salmon on your eggs. So you're starting your day with a good amount of sodium, which you need on keto, and I'll save that for another video. But you're also getting a good amount of omega-3s to start your day. Omega-3s and omega-6s are always in a balance, in a fight with each other. We need to constantly combat that with good omega-3s. And the eggs, no matter how we get around it, we're going to have a high amount of omega-6s. So I balance that by having some smoked salmon. Then with women and men, actually, coffee with a couple tablespoons of coconut cream. Get one of those cans of coconut milk and then use two tablespoons of that after it's been in the fridge and mix that into your coffee. It tastes like half and half without the inflammatory effects of the dairy. And then you're getting obviously the lauric acid and all the benefits digestively from the coconut, but you're also getting the phosphodiesterase inhibition of coffee, which is a fancy way of saying it blocks fat accumulation and allows fat burning. Now, I don't want you to munch on a single thing for three hours. Okay, three hours later, you can have a little snack, but here's what it is. It's all about thyroid support with this snack. This is a thyroid power punch meal. Okay, we're talking a little bit of seaweed snacks, 
if you can handle them. You don't have to have them. Seaweed snacks, I think, are delicious. And just a few Brazil nuts. Seaweed snacks are going to get us the iodine. Very important for a female thyroid. Females are a lot more likely to suffer from hypothyroidism, where your metabolism slows down because of your thyroid. So then we add the Brazil nuts to get ourselves, A, some fats, but B, some selenium, which helps the liver convert inactive thyroid hormone into active thyroid hormone. Very good for your metabolism. Okay, then at least a couple hours later, so this is at, say, maybe 7 a.m.-ish, 8 a.m.-ish, and then you're having this around 10 or 11, and then here maybe have like 1 o'clock, something like that, within that ballpark. This is your lunch option. Okay, and I give you two options here, and I'll explain why. Okay, first off, we have grass-fed, grass-finished meat. Okay, go for a good quality red meat that's grass-fed, grass-finished, and do a burger. If you have to go to a restaurant, ask them if it's grass-fed, grass-finished. It's probably not, but one or two times isn't going to kill you. Okay, so normally you want to have good quality stuff at home. Uh, I do highly recommend that you check out ButcherBox. If you haven't already, ButcherBox is a way for you to get grass-fed, grass-finished meat really inexpensively delivered to your doorstep. So I use them all the time. My house like lives exclusively on it, so it's really awesome. It saves you a trip to the grocery store. So you just order what kind of meat you want, they deliver it right to your doorstep, and it's cheaper than the grocery store, and it's gonna get you the high omega-3 meat. Honestly, you're not gonna find it at most of your grocery stores. So I went ahead, I put a link in the description, because I know a lot of you are probably wondering where you can get that. So down below, after you watch this video, check them out, and that way you can get started on this meal plan. Okay, then I say put like a quarter to a half of an organic avocado. Okay, that way we're getting the oleic acid and the vitamin E, balancing out our fatty acid profile. I recommend using like some Kite Hill cream cheese. This is like not traditional cream cheese, non-dairy. It's gonna be almond-based. I'm just trying to reduce the dairy footprint. Women are very sensitive from an estrogen standpoint to the hormones in dairy. So please try to keep it minimal because in this particular meal, I recommend having some caprese, which is gonna be like some basil, gonna be a little bit of vinegar, gonna be, of course, your cucumber. It's gonna be a little bit of tomato and a little bit of mozzarella coming from buffalo. Buffalo mozzarella is just better quality. If you just have to do regular mozzarella, that's fine. This is just a sample, right? Just giving you an idea. If you could eat like this daily, you'd be golden, but I know this isn't ideal and gonna be perfect for everybody. Okay, an alternative would be a Cobb salad. But instead of using romaine lettuce, I want you to use baby kale or spring mix, easier to digest. Okay. And I want you to use white meat chicken, no dark meat chicken, no thigh, okay? The fatty acid profile of the dark meat is gonna work against you right now. Okay, very hormonal, very estrogenic, not what we want right now. Then non-dairy ranch, or if you have to go with a dairy ranch, get the packets that don't have MSG, mix it up with some yogurt or some sour cream and make your own because most of the dairy ranch items that you find in the refrigerated section of the grocery store are loaded with just low quality dairy and a bunch of other preservatives. Not worth it, okay? Uh, one hard boiled egg and then use regular bacon. Don't have to worry about turkey bacon. We want the fats here. So use some regular bacon, just get organic, good quality stuff, okay? In fact, uh, butcher box that you can get the, the beef from. They also have really good quality, really good quality bacon as well. Okay, so you finished lunch. Now what? Okay, what's different for a female? Well, between lunch and dinner is really where you are going to burn a lot of fat. This is a really powerful time for you. Okay, here I drew a little chart here and it, it doesn't make any sense until I explain it, okay? So here we have a meal, right? We eat a meal and this black line represents insulin. Our insulin levels go up, and then after we're done digesting, a couple hours later, insulin levels start to come back down again, and then we eat, and they come back up. Every time we eat, insulin goes up, okay? Now, what happens is in between our meals, when insulin levels have gone up, we start to see uh, a decrease in glucagon. This red line is something called glucagon. As insulin comes down, glucagon comes up. Well, it just so happens that right here, draw a little part there, that's where fat burning occurs. So fat burning occurs in between our meals. And if we eat even so much as a peanut, this line, this insulin line comes back and that glucagon line comes back down as soon as we eat something. So fat burning is the sweet spot in between meals right here. So we gotta, don't snack on anything between this time. We have a strategic snack here, but I want you to go a longer period of time between lunch and dinner, like five hours, okay? Go from like 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. and don't eat. And if you absolutely have to eat, consume a drink or something that gives you an insulin spike that's very minimal. So we're talking, one of my favorites, water, a little bit of ginger juice, apple cider vinegar, some lemon juice, and some stevia. Very powerful appetite suppressing effects that have a minimal effect on insulin, so you should still get that sweet spot right there. Now let's move into dinner. Now I know you're gonna see fish here, and some of you might be thinking, I don't like fish. Okay, I have some alternatives for you, it's okay, but this is ideal. 
lean fish, we're talking like a Pacific cod, or we're talking like a, um, even a halibut would be perfect, a lean fish. And then either that or a shellfish. I prefer scallops, okay, or mussels. The nice thing about scallops and mussels, high levels of zinc. Talking about the thyroid again to you ladies, okay, the thyroid is so important. And zinc allows receptors for the thyroid hormones to function better. Without zinc, thyroid could be doing fine, but it doesn't have anywhere to bind. And it needs zinc to activate and make that receptor healthy so it can do its job. So that's why I'm like, okay, perfect time to make some delicious kind of meal here. Take some zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash and make some noodles out of it. And then take half coconut oil, okay, maybe like maybe one tablespoon coconut oil and one tablespoon ghee and mix it together, melt it down and mix it together. That way you get the fatty acid profile and the lauric acid, digestive benefits of coconut oil, but you get the short chain fatty acid, digestive benefit and anti-inflammatory lipopolysaccharide blocking effect of ghee really awesome. I mean, I'm nerding out here, but trust me, that's a really, really bad combo in a good way. Bad, bad. Right? So what we want to do there is make like a scampi sauce, add a little bit of garlic. You don't want to have garlic at the beginning of the day because it is a high FODMAP food. Okay, so fructo oligosaccharide, so basically it can make you bloat. But it is a prebiotic. So if we have it at the end of the day, if you do get a little bit of bloating, it's not the end of the world, it's at the end of the day, but at least you're getting a prebiotic effect growing good bacteria, which is going to help you out digesting all these fats, right? So make that, make it, so you're basically making a scampi, right? You're making a nice seafood scampi over some zucchini noodles with a garlic butter sauce, and then have some cruciferous veggies so you get an anti-estrogen effect, okay? Very powerful, so cruciferous is gonna be bok choy, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, steam them, enjoy them, okay? Um, FYI too, if you do like scallops, uh, ButcherBox also has scallops, so you can check them out down in the description or just get them at the store. Okay, and then supplements. I, I'm not gonna do a whole section on supplements because, wow, when it comes down, the female body is complex and there's a, it's like a matrix of so many different supplements that you could take, but I think that the basics are here. I feel like you should have some pea protein on hand, pea protein powder, potentially use it as a pro, uh, post-workout or potentially substitute breakfast with it if you're in a pinch, okay? Don't use whey protein unless you can really keep it clean and honestly, I just recommend pea protein. Vitamin D3 K2 blend. Okay, you should probably be taking a couple thousand IUs, 2,000 IUs or so. You need to consult with a, you know, a, an expert on that in terms of what's going to work for you. But vitamin D3 and K2 work synergistically to allow calcium to get out of the arteries and into the bone. But therefore, D3 is an active hormone in our body that actually helps the migration of brown fat to white fat, or white fat to brown fat, excuse me, but also helps out just body fat in a lot of different ways. It's a hormone, not just a vitamin. Then I want you to take DIM. Check out just a couple hundred milligrams, 300 milligrams of diendole and methane. Very high in cruciferous vegetables, but you can get it in a supplement form. It's going to help the liver metabolize 1,7-hydroxy estrogens. So it's going to make it so estrogens aren't quite so out of balance. And then lastly, for females, very important to get some curcumin, anti-inflammatory effects of turmeric curcumin, especially if you are um, premenopause. Okay, because then you're going to be dealing with cramps and all that fun stuff, right? That I don't even have the slightest idea of how painful that might be, but I have a wife, so <laughs> I get it. Um, this can help you a lot. Okay, cyclooxygenase enzyme 2 inhibition, so it basically makes it so inflammation goes down, so you have less pain from that. So I know this is just a very basic outline, and please, please forgive me that it's not like as robust as it could be, but I wanted to make this simple so you could just get started with an ideal female keto weight loss plan. It's, it's simple. So as always, please keep it locked in on my channel. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.